Thank you for coming to my panel. I appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, if anyone wants, I guess, yeah, raise your hand like we're in class and I can uh, <laughs> answer any questions you might have. But, yeah, right here. So you have a topic suggestion? You should do Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow? Yeah, I, that has been, um, it's been highly suggested many times. And uh, I would love to do that because I grew up playing those games. And uh, yeah, it would, be, it would be a fun video to make. Yeah, right here. Do you think there will be another 3D Kirby game? I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a card, it's a now, safe bet. Did you play the uh, Forgotten Land? Yeah. There's a very good game. Tried to be chaos also still. Okay. There's a lot to collect in that game. You'll you'll uh, you'll be busy for a while. But yes, I do think there will be another 3D Kirby game. I think they said that was like the best-selling Kirby game of all time now, the Forgotten Land one. So I think people like it. It honestly shocked me how long it took for them to make a fully 3D Kirby game because the one on 64 was 3D, but it was like a side scroller. So. For some reason, it's uh, I'm connected to the internet, but it's saying I'm offline. So, any other questions? Anyone else have any other questions about? Why not? Yeah. What is the most overrated and underrated console? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> good luck, multitask. Well, underrated. I don't know. Um, you know, underrated, I might say the TurboGrafx-16 is pretty underrated. I think that was a really good console. Mm -hmm. Overrated. Um, maybe the Nintendo Wii. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, the Wii's great, but man, people went nuts for the Wii. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I look back on it, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. Do you think it will cover like maybe that kind of topic where the casual gamer crash after the week? Oh, it was like all the shovelware yeah. that came out yeah. after the week. That, yeah, that would be interesting. Actually, I worked at GameStop when the week came out, and so like I had first-hand experience with mm -hmm. all of the shovelware that came out. And, uh, yeah, that would be a good topic for sure. <laughs> Let me see if I can get online. Action restored. Yes. Okay. All right. You guys see this? Sweet. Okay. Uh, is there any way we could like hit the lights? Oh, there we go. You guys see that? Okay. Well, anyways, welcome to uh, welcome to my presentation at the KC All-in-One Gaming Expo. This is uh, my first time at a convention in Kansas City. And if you guys don't know, I live in Kansas City, so this is wonderful that I can, uh, you know, drive 20 minutes and go to a gaming convention. It's awesome. So thank you all for coming here, and I hope that uh, this this continues. Uh, because gaming conventions are fun, so. Anyway, um, what I want to talk about today is actually a something I covered very recently. The video came out yesterday. Express. Uh, but I wanted to kind of give you a personal presentation on this. Um, and that is what's called the Express. Has, has anyone ever seen this before? Is anyone familiar with this? Not before I watched your video. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so if you've seen the video, you know what we're going to talk about. But uh, basically, this was a portable Nintendo Entertainment System. That was the idea. It never came out. This is the only the only photo we have of it. Um, so I'm just going to tell you more about the system, who came up with it, and why it never saw the light of day. So. This all started in 1989, and this is kind of when handheld systems were 
were the big thing. So in the summer of 1989, the game, Nintendo releases the Game Boy, and it's a huge hit, even though it has you know a monochrome screen, and the games are pretty simple, the, the launch titles. Um, it's a big hit, and Nintendo thought they would sell 9 million units by the end of 1990, which is a lot. Uh, but also in the fall of 1989, Atari rises from the grave and says, we're going to release the Lynx, which was the first handheld with a color backlit screen. And that was about double the price of the Game Boy. And then in the winter of 1990, NEC, who makes the TurboGrafx-16, announces the Turbo Express, which is a portable version of the TurboGrafx-16. And then in the spring of 1990, Sega notices how popular the Game Boy is and says, well, let's make one of those too. And so they start teasing the Game Gear. And again, it was purely made to compete with the Game Boy. But then there is the Express. Here's my photo. There it is. This is a 3D render, by the way. This is this is not a not a photo of it. I don't have the Express, but <laughs> uh, this was a portable NES, and it claimed to be compatible with every game for the Nintendo Entertainment System, except the Zapper Gun games. Um, it measured about six inches wide, eight inches high, about two inches deep, and it had a four-inch backlit color screen, which was pretty impressive for for that day. Um, the first version, as you see, had controller ports built in. Uh, so I guess the idea was you would like set it on a table and you would plug in your controllers and play it that way, which uh, I don't think that was a great idea, but they did make a second version that had a built-in controller. Um, the system also had a built-in speaker and a headphone jack with simulated stereo sound. So if you guys don't know, the Nintendo Entertainment System had mono sound. But there, there was a way to simulate stereo sound. Have you guys ever seen that controller? It's the uh, Joy Card Sansui. It's like a gold controller. Basically, you could plug it in um, to the audio port of your NES, and it would give you simulated stereo sound. Um, it's, it's a really nice controller, but this basically did that as well. And, and finally, it ran on 4C batteries. and. They claimed it had 30 to 40 hours of battery life. That is... Not on your life. No. <laughs> Never confirmed. That's what they claimed. C4C batteries. C4C batteries, yeah. All right. So who, who made this thing? This was made by a company called BDL Enterprises. And it was started by a man named Paul Biederman. And he was an ex-Capcom employee. And that's him on the left there. That's Paul Biederman. Um, BDL Enterprises was also known as Biederman Design Labs. And Paul Biederman was a technician at Capcom. And he mostly worked on arcade stuff. So, you know, arcade boards, he would fix the machines and whatnot. And then Capcom started making NES games that I'm sure you all are familiar with. Bionic Commando, Mega Man, Mickey Mouse Capade, Section Z. And so he he kind of shifted from arcades to writing up the manuals for uh, these games. And then he decided he was going to go out on his own, start his own company, and he formed BDL Enterprises. And this was BDL Enterprises first, and I believe their only product. It was called the Turbo Blaster. Um, basically what this did was it acted as a middleman between your controller and the NES. It turned your a standard NES controller into one with turbo functionality. It cost thirty nine ninety nine. Came out in the spring of nineteen ninety, and the Nintendo Power also featured it. Um, I actually have one for sale at my table. If you're interested, <laughs> it does. It, it works really well. Um, it, it's a really it's a really good product. Is is that a potentiometer to choose how fast the Yep. Turbo goes? Cool. Yep. Exactly. Also had a slow motion functionality, which I think it just pauses, pauses. the game very, very quickly over yeah. and over and over again. Um, so this was, so his next idea was the Express console, and video game magazines picked up on it, and this is a screenshot from Electronic Gaming Monthly, and they were calling it the Nintendo Express. 
It was first teased in April of 1990, and uh, BDL Enterprise's plan was to demonstrate the device to Nintendo in the summer and hopefully get a license. Uh, and what do you guys think happened? Did Nintendo approve this product? No. no. Um, so the big, the big issue with needing a license is Paul Biederman made this device using Nintendo chips. And so those are patented chips. And so you have to get a license to manufacture something like this. And so he demonstrated it to Nintendo. They said no, so why did Nintendo say no? The, the issue actually wasn't with the chips. Nintendo actually didn't really have a problem with him using those chips. And they thought it was a pretty cool thing. The problem was the concept of the system. And Nintendo was concerned this would uh, split the customer base of the Game Boy, because the Game Boy was still new. It hadn't been, even been on the market for a year. And Nintendo was also trying to, it was ready to phase out the Nintendo Entertainment System because the Super Famicom was coming out in Japan, it was coming over here as a Super Nintendo, and so Nintendo was ready to move on to the 16-bit era. And so the Express just didn't really make sense uh, for, to license. So believe it or not, uh, Paul Biederman took the news well, just said, well, I'm not gonna make this if I can't get a license, so I'll just keep on making stuff, and he designed this as well. This is a Game Boy to NES adapter. Uh, allowed you to play Game Boy games on your Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, what's funny is, while Paul Biederman was, um, he took the news well, the, the video game magazines at the time were like so upset the Express was not coming out. Um, there was one article that said, like, everyone, everyone's abandoning the Game Boy for the Atari Lynx. So, you know, if, if they put out the Express, people wouldn't, people wouldn't do that anymore. Which is great, like, in retrospect, to think about that. Like, everyone abandoning the Game Boy for the Atari Lynx. But that's what, just what they were thinking at the time, you know? So then, uh, this little company called Comerica contacted BDL Enterprises and said, hey, we're interested in uh, releasing the Express and the Game Boy to NES adapter. Is anyone familiar with Comerica? Do you know who Comerica is? So you know Comerica was famous for their unlicensed products. Um, they made zapper gun clones, they made games that were unlicensed, they made controllers. Their most famous product was probably the Game Genie, which you see here. Uh, they, Comerica distributed the Game Genie in Canada, and then they licensed it to Galoob for the United States. So Comerica said, hey, we'll, uh, we will release the Express and your Game Boy to NES adapter. And uh, this was the last we heard of the Exp Express. There was an Electronic Gaming Monthly article about the Express and Comerica's plans to release it. Um, however, that was the last we heard, and it was most likely due to the threat of litigation. They abandoned, Comerica abandoned the project altogether. Um, and this was something I discovered in the research, which I don't know if anyone has ever found this before. In 1993, the Canadian government shut down Comerica for illegally routing their 1-800 number through Cuba. Um, the general understanding before this was Comerica filed for bankruptcy and went out of business. Uh, but I found this article from this Canadian newspaper saying the government shut them down, uh, which actually makes a lot of sense uh, considering, like, a lot of the people that ran Comerica, you just, like, can't find them anymore. I don't know if they, like, went incognito or what, or if they, they faced further trouble, but, like, <laughs> Comerica just, like, disappeared. And, um, yeah, that was the Express. That was... The portable NES we never got. Does anyone have any questions or comments about the Express? Anyone? I've blown your minds. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. 
Does anyone have any questions or comments in general about the the show or about anything? I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah. Um, kind of a base question, but you, you seem to have a lot of like really small quotes and stuff from people in your mm -hmm. videos. I was curious, like, do you just scour the internet for random quotes from these people, or do you like reach out and contact them for information on it? So you're talking about in my videos when, um, like, when I show a quote or you hear a quote. Yeah, like uh, in the Atari video or something, you'll you'll mention like um, something that one of the people said. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you find that? Uh, so it's it's both. So sometimes I'll talk to the actual person and they will give me that quote and I'll use it. Other times, yeah, they may have said that to somebody else in, for an article or a newspaper article or something like that. So Just a lot of research. Basically, yeah, it's it's all part of the research. Yeah. Anyone else have a question? Yeah. For the guest voices in your videos, do you reach out to them or do they reach out to you? Um, I usually reach out to them. And um, I used to use a lot of YouTubers. And I've slowly shifted away from that. And I'm using more voice actors now because I just think they deliver the lines better. Right. No offense to my YouTube <laughs> friends, but like, uh, yeah. So it's 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 a lot of fun. There's I've used I I've used Fiverr. Fiverr is a great resource for for voice actors. And believe, I know, I think it used to be everything was five bucks on Fiverr. Yeah. But now you, they charge whatever they want. Um, but yeah, Fiverr is a great resource for for those quotes. And I have people that I've used over and over because they're just easy to work with and they do a good job. So, and I don't know if anyone watches Lazy Game Reviews. Uh, my my buddy Clint, he has a phenomenal voice, so I use him a lot. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Why did you start your channel? Why did I start it? Yeah. Um, that's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, I, I started it because I, well, I wanted to make videos, um, and I was in school for history, and I collected video games, and I was just very curious about the history of video games, and so, well, maybe, I said, well, maybe I can do this. Believe it or not, when my, when my channel first started, I did comedic videos. It was, like, comedic reviews, you know. I watched the Angry Video Game Nerd like everybody else, yeah. and I was inspired by that, so I made those, but I, I, I don't think that was my calling, I guess, because I made a few of them, and I, was, I, don't, I just kind of wasn't into it, uh, but then I got into the history stuff, and I was super into that, so that's kind of how it started, I guess. I think my first video I ever made was how to use a Dazzle. Do you remember the Dazzle video recorder? Oh. I did like a video tutorial on how to use that. I think I deleted that video. Though. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it exists anymore. Any other questions? Yeah. Back to this. Yeah. Playing the what if game, do you think that a company like Sega might have embraced this a little more than Nintendo? That's a great observation. Sega actually did, I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with the Nomad, was a portable Sega Genesis. Um, and so. Yeah, I mean, Sega thought it was a great idea, and the Nomad was a great, a great handheld. Um, but it launched near the Game Gear, didn't it? What's that? <clears throat> didn't it launch around the same time as the Game Gear? The Nomad launched, I believe, in like '94 or '95. It was much later than the oh, Game okay. Gear. Yeah, and uh, and that was also around the time when Sega was just like hardware happy. They would just put out <laughs> right. so much hardware, and I think that. That came back to bite them. Right. I don't think that was a, the best idea. But uh, to answer your question, yes, Sega would definitely embrace that more than Nintendo. Nintendo is, has always been very picky about what they release. So, anyone else? Yeah. Where'd you go to school? I went to Elizabeth City State University, home of the Vikings, in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. That's the town I grew up in. And, uh, that's where I went, went to school. It's a, just a small Division II school. Uh, they had a great history program, though, so it was a good experience. And I'm, in, I'm at UMKC right now for my master's. 
it's going very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> what for? Public history. Gotcha. Yeah. That, that's an interesting degree because they let you, um, for your thesis, they let you make a documentary. And I was like, oh, well, I kind of do that already, so that might line up well. But it's going slowly. I don't know when I'll graduate, but, you know, I'm having fun. Yeah. Uh, is there any topics you've tried to cover we you just couldn't get any information about it? Yes. Actually, um, I had something at my table today. There's an official Nintendo soundtrack called White Knuckles Scorin. It came out in like 91 or 92. And it has random music tracks on it, like Roy Orbison is on the soundtrack and stuff. And so I was like, I bought that years ago at this small video game store in Pittsburgh. And uh, I was like, this would make a great video, but there's just there's just nothing on it. It's just this random thing that came out. So, I mean, there's stuff like that happens all the time. I mean, I'd love to do a video on like Ape Escape. I really like the Ape Escape games, but there's just really not a lot to that I, I, I have found yet. I'm sure it's out there. It's just you gotta. It's and it's always harder when it's from Japan because you have like if you want to talk to Japanese developers, that's a big roadblock, and then get magazines translated, so, but yeah, it happens all the time. All right, what time is it? It is 3.20. I think we should play Jeopardy. What do you think? I have a Jeopardy game here. It's basically gaming a story in Jeopardy. If you've watched the videos, you will, you will do good. So, um, yeah. I think we could have we could have three people sit up here. Who would like to play? If you if you'd like to volunteer and play, please raise your hand, and I will pick three people to play gaming historian Jeopardy. I think we only have three volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> Tough decision. Yeah, uh, please come on up. Have a seat at this. Uh, this will be like a game show. I'm at the podium, and Destin's here. I'll get it set up here. I think if you want to grab that chair in the corner, bring it over there. Okay. That's the first time that's ever happened. Ask for volunteers, and we have three exactly. <laughs> so that makes it easy. Let's see. You have to bring the chair over, buddy. Okay, um, this is a pretty small room, so I think we can hear without microphones. If you all would introduce yourselves. Uh, first, sir. I'm Royce. I'm Martin. Say your name. Oh, I'm Duncan. Duncan? Okay, we've got our uh, three contestants here, and uh, I'm going to pull up the game. So this is kind of a uh, caveman style. I don't have buzzers. You're just gonna have to slap the table if you want to buzz in. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it does have a buzzer mode, but I don't have those. So and I'm just gonna choose your your characters here. Here, I get this pulled up. Okay, it was Royce, right? Yes. Okay, Royce, you are going to be the potato. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, in the middle, what was your name, sir? Uh, Martin. Martin? Yeah. Martin, you are going to be broccoli. Perfect. And Duncan, on the end, you are going to be celery. Okay. <laughs> we are ready. Okay, this is Game and Historian Jeopardy. The categories are randomness, mistakes were made, let's go to court, which talks about video game lawsuits, Name that game. So in Name That Game, a screenshot of the game will show on the screen, and you just have to tell me what the game is. Hardware. And then the final category, games that start with the letter Q. Got it? This is a great room, by the way, because you guys can literally look forward. <laughs> when I play this at other conventions, they're just like craning their necks, trying to figure it out. OK, uh, think of a number between 1 and 20. Seven. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, Twenty. Twenty? The number was twelve. 
So who said 13? That's, oh, that's the closest. I'll go with that. All right, you have the board, sir. Please pick a category. Name that game for 100. Name that game for 100. Hands ready on the table to slap. <laughs> also, uh, audience members, if you could help me determine who slapped first, that would be helpful. But name that game for 100. Here we go. Oh. I think, uh, was that, was that, I think Duncan's, the Duncan slapping first? No, I think it was him. Martin, Martin, what name that game, sir? Super Mario World. That is correct. Super Mario World. <laughs> I forgot it had sounds. Okay, you have the board, sir. Let's spell big. Uh, name that game 500. Wow, name that game for 500. Duncan. Also possum. That is correct. Awesome possum. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Duncan. All right, Duncan, you have the board. Name, uh, pick your category. Uh, hardware for 300. Hardware for 300. Released by Bondi, this quirky accessory turns your Game Boy into a fish finder. It only came out I know what it is. Who slept first? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. What do you got? Game Boy Pocket Sonar. That is correct. Ooh. Yeah! <laughs> All right, Duncan, you still have the board. Okay, I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> he is a, a yeah. true gaming historian fan. Awesome. He's, he's killing it. Uh, who's big one? Uh, name the game. Name that game for how much? 200. 200. All right, name that game. Duncan. It's, it's like the Sega Zelda knockoff. Uh, I don't what it's called, though. What is it called? Crusader of Senti. That is correct. Crusader of Senti. Alright, you still have to pick your category. Hardware for 200. Hardware for 200. Don't touch this laptop looking controller. <laughs> That is correct. <laughs> okay, same thing, but for 100. Hardware for 100. Yeah. Created by LJN, this odd controller. <laughs> Duncan. The rocket roller. Not technically, no. Close. It is not the rocking. The roll of rocker. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I didn't hear I was a big then. Anyone else want to buzz in? I can picture it, but I can't remember the name. Okay, well, Duncan, you got it right the second time. It was the rolling rocker. That's okay. You still have the board, and you still have a commanding lead. Right now. <laughs> uh, so go ahead and pick your category. Uh, name the game for three hundred. Name that game for three hundred. Mario Paint. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> that game's also on Mario Maker. It is on Mario Maker. The Fly Swatter game. Okay, Duncan, you still have the board. <laughs> Name that game for 400. <laughs> Duncan. It's some Mega Man game. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. Mega Man on DOS. What? what is it? Mega Man on DOS. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the sprite and I looked at it and I realized it was DOS. Mega Man on DOS. Alright, uh, you have. I think you swept that category. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like next? Hardware for 400. Hardware for 400. Released in 1990 and only in Japan, this accessory for the Mega Drive brought the world of online gaming. I heard two slaps. <laughs> Duncan. It was like a phone thing for like. I need a name, sir. I need I the know. name of the product. I don't know. 
<laughs> Anyone else want to buzz in? Uh, it was like the, I remember it being like the, con, like the connect or something. Seganet? It's not Seganet. Sega Channel. Oh, I do oh. remember the Sega Channel. I would dial in and it would be a different game. Anyone else? All right, the answer was, wait a minute, I think, uh, <laughs> the answer was the Mega Modem. The Mega Modem. Predated the Sega Channel. Way better than the Mega Okay, well, uh, Duncan, you still have the board. <laughs> Please name your uh, category. And... The six one for 100. Sorry, was that mistakes? Uh -huh. Mistakes for 100. For Microsoft, three blinking red lights signified. Duncan. The red ring of death. The red ring of death is correct. I'm winning. <laughs> yes, uh, if you updated totals, Duncan, uh, Mr. Celery, has a total of $1,500. Broccoli, $100. And Mr. Potato, you have negative $400. Uh, but, Duncan, you have the board. Please choose your next category. Uh, same one for 200 Mistakes were made for 200 at the very first E3 conference, Sega surprised everyone by announcing that this system... The Dreamcast. Incorrect. <gasps> the Dreamcast. It's the Saturn. You buzzed in, sir? Yeah, I buzzed in. He buzzed in. Oh, okay. It is the Sega Saturn. That is yes. correct. <laughs> All right, Brock the Broccoli mounting the comeback. Here we go. <laughs> you have the board. Uh, let's try 300. Mistakes were made for 300. In 1991, Nintendo rebuffed Sony and made oh. it. This, that. Oh, I'll send up the disk drive. Uh, 1991. Nintendo rebuffed Sony and made a deal with yeah. this electronics company to develop oh, wait, a Phillips. CD app. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. I know it is Phillips, yes. Oh, I, was I thought it was, I was I thought it was too. Okay. okay, you have the board, sir. 400? 400, all right. After Nintendo decided to make the Nintendo 64 use cartridges, Square decided to move this famous... Final Fantasy! That's correct, Final Fantasy. Okay, he's a platform. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Duncan, you have the board. Okay, I'd like to do random for 100. Random for 100, so this could be anything. Actually, <laughs> this Mario character is known as Canopio. Yes, Duncan. Toad. That is Toad, yes. <laughs> I think we've got a super fan. <laughs> All right, you have the board. Games that start with Q for 100. Games that start with the letter Q for 100. This isometric arcade game. Cubert is correct. Oh. Potato. The end of the negative? Flying yeah. back. <laughs> He's negative 500. But, but you, have, you have the board, sir. Uh, mistakes were made 500. Mistakes were made for 500. In 2011, hackers infiltrated this service from Sony. The PlayStation Network. That is correct. PlayStation Network. Okay, Broccoli, you're making it interesting here. Late in the game, um, you have the board. Let's go random 500. Random 500, okay. In 1987, Shigeru Miyamoto it was like uh, <laughs> Disneyland or Disney World or something. Disneyland, I think. Yeah, Disneyland. I cannot accept Disneyland. I'm sorry. Disney World? Disney World is correct. Oh no, it's a shift. Broccoli has a slim lead. Uh, 
Let's go to court 100. Let's go to court for 100. This company was known for publishing unlicensed NES games. Duncan. Oh, what? That was Tungan. Tengen is correct. I do it. So we're tied up here. Duncan, you have the board. Okay. Uh, let's do hardware for 500. Hardware for 500. In what could be the first parental control device? Yes. I think it was homework first. Homework first is correct. Wow. Oh, Uh, Duncan, I must say, you are the first person to answer that correctly in my year of using this game at conventions. So, Yay! congratulations. Yay! Yeah. But you have the board. This is the thing I do. Watch your videos. Oh. Excellent. That's good on behalf. Uh, Rand's up for 200. Randomness for 200. True or false, you could cheat in NES light gun games. False. That is correct. You cannot just shoot a lamb. Yeah, that's only with like other stuff. You have the board, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say category, but for 300. Randomness for 300. In 1992, Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi agreed to purchase a 49% stake. You have to do it. I did it too soon. Not me. Not me. I someone else. I'm going to have to deduct points. You did buzz in, sir. <laughs> Seattle Mariners. Seattle Mariners is correct. Potato, you're at negative 200. All right. You're getting, you're getting, you're getting, you're getting there. There's Randomness for 400. Randomness for 400. Before Super Mario Maker, Capcom was making this game, a Mega Man themed level creator. Unfortunately, it got canceled. Mega Man Universe! That is correct. Yeah! I don't know what questions are there. There are eight more questions, and then there's final Jeopardy. Duncan, please choose a category. Oh, okay. I've got games that start with the letter Q or let's go to court. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, court for 200. Court for 200. Nintendo sued this company, the makers of... Codemasters! That is incorrect. Oh. America. That is... Wait, what did you say? Comerica. I will accept Comerica. That is correct. <laughs> Galoob as well. Oh, that's right. I would also accept the North, but I will accept Comerica as well because they were basically operating as the same company. Okay. Uh, Potato, you are at zero again. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> You've done. You've crawled out of the hole. Yeah. Let's go to court for 500. Let's go to court for 500. He's going for the big bucks, folks. In 1990, a nine-year-old Clark Tiemann and his parents sued Major League Baseball, Nintendo, and this video game company for violating the Connecticut Unfair Trade Practices Act. What is the name of the video game company they sued? He needs this 500. <laughs> he needs it. Anyone buzzing in? I'm pretty sure I know the game, but I don't know who made it. No one buzzed in. The answer, LJN. Oh, not what I meant, though. Well, uh, Potato, you still have the board. Uh, let's go to court 400. Let's go to court for 400. 2002, this sportswear company sued Sega for stealing Nike. Nike is correct. Yeah. Sega. Okay, do you want to finish out the let's go to court category? Okay, 300. All right, 300. Nintendo sued this rental store chain. Blockbuster. That is correct. 
You want to just go down the road? Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> Developed by id Software, the makers of Doom, this first-person shooter... Quake. Quake is correct. All right. You want to just go down? 300? Okay. This Nintendo 64 RPG was the first one... Oh, crap. I would just watch a video on this. Uh... Does start with the letter Q. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Quest 64? That is correct. Quest 64. Tato, you are in the positive there. Yeah. All right, let me do 400. Yep. When you get a high score, Mario is featured in cutscenes around the world in this Game Boy puzzle game. Well, uh, is he a little quick? Kicks, kicks, kicks. Kicks is correct. Go with a Q. <laughs> Alright, last one. This Atari arcade game was an early light gun shooter where you shoot ducks. It predates Nintendo's Duck Hunt game by 10 years. Anyone want to give it a guess? Quick draw. Quick draw is incorrect. Oh. <laughs> The answer is, you gotta have ducks on your mind. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go to uh, Final Jeopardy. The totals right now are uh, Duncan on the end there, Mr. Celery, has $3,300. Broccoli in the middle, $1,800. And Potato, I am sorry to say you are at negative $200. <laughs> so I don't believe you can actually play Final Jeopardy. You're more than welcome to give an answer, of course. Um, but we need to put in some wagers. Uh, Celery, what would you like to wager for Final Jeopardy? Do you last. Okay. I'll have to put in zero for uh, Potato. Mr. Broccoli, you have 1,800. Do you want to wager? Uh, my only real shot at victory is to blow the lot, so let's do that. That's right. You gotta go all in. All right, he's all in. Celery, Duncan, what would you like? No, okay. Uh, the whole thing I had. The whole thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, no, no. Uh. <laughs> he's got family giving advice in the audience. 1,200. 1,200 is your wager. Okay. Okay. The final Jeopardy question is, before Nintendo had their own console, they ported five of their arcade games to Atari systems. Hang on. <laughs> Name three of them. Okay. Okay. Now... I don't have pen and paper. Oh, wait, I do have this. Does anyone have a pen? Yeah, I do. Does anyone have a pen I could borrow? We're going to do this. Thank you very much. Okay. Don't have a pen. Okay. Oh, excellent. Thank you. All right, you're going to write your answers on these little sheets of paper. Just pass those down. Again, Nintendo ported five games to Atari systems. Name three of them. Just need three of them. I used to do this question, uh, name all of them, and there was always one people could never get, so I changed it to name three of them. All right, do you have your uh, answer here? Sure. Sir, thank you very much. Done. All done? All 
right. Thank you, sir. This is for everything. Make sure he's got it. Sorry, potato. You didn't lose any. But you didn't lose any. In the middle, Mr. Broccoli. We've got Galaga. That is incorrect. Asteroids. That is incorrect. Pac-Man. That is incorrect. Sorry, Broccoli. Oh, yeah. Pac-Man Oh, wow. It's eliminated. It just kills your character. <laughs> The Hunger Games. <laughs> Finally, Duncan on the end. I have a feeling he might get the <laughs> Donkey Kong. That is correct. Yeah. Donkey Kong Jr. That is also correct. And he even named the one no one ever gets, Sky Skipper. That oh, wow. wow! Congratulations! <laughs> you are the gaming historian, Jeopardy champion. Tony Tony Three. That's truly impressive, sir. How old are you? How old are you, Ducky? I'm not. Absolutely. A nine-year-old by a nine-year-old. Absolutely demolishes. By a nine-year-old. I uh, have a prize for you, but actually I remember you came up to my table earlier and you got one of these already. So this is yours. You can either take another notebook or you can gift it to whoever you would like. Congratulations. Great job. Um, and it looks like, well, we've got like five more minutes. If anyone has any more questions, be happy to answer them. Or Duncan can answer them too. Duncan <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, can also answer any questions. Duncan's got the next panel. That's four. Oh yeah, let's see. He goes away. And then, oh, <laughs> hey! hey! That's pretty cool. This was uh, this is a like a teacher thing for your classroom. You can like play games, but it works for uh, video game panels as well. <laughs> All right, but anyway, if uh, no one has any other questions, thank you all for coming to my panel. And uh, Oh, I'm sorry. What you got? Do you play Minecraft? I do not play Minecraft. <laughs> um, that, that's, uh, that came a little, a little after my time. But, uh, yeah. I played Fortnite. <laughs> How long do your videos typically take from, like, research to upload? Uh, that's a good question. It always depends on the topic. Sure. So this video on the Express that took about three weeks to make between research, writing, editing, and what took the longest on that video was 3D animations, because um, that took a while. Uh, the guy that did the 3D animations, he's my friend, his name's Yoshi, and um, he has worked, he's worked on some, he's worked on The Mandalorian. Oh, wow. Uh, he worked on that Amazon series, Invincible. So he's like a legit visual effects artist. So I was like blown away that he was able to help me with that. So that's awesome. It's cool, yeah. But then you have a video like Tetris that took like six months. Gotcha. So it all depends on the topic. Yes, uh, Jeopardy champion. What is your question? Um. So how many how many videos did you make in total? In total, I actually have no idea. I have no idea how many videos I've made. Um, it's 
got to be close to 100, I'm guessing, at this point. Yeah, I'll say 100. It's a good guess. Yeah? What brought you to Kansas? What brought me to Kansas? My wife. Uh, she's, from, she's from this area. She went to Shawnee Mission Northwest. The Cougars <laughs> is what I've heard is their mascot. Yeah, she's from this area. She wanted to move back, so I came with her. And I've been here since 2012. Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to be here for the rest of our lives. Love Kansas City. So. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, I love Kansas City. You got a million subscribers today. I did. Thank you very much. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I, uh, I was eating breakfast this morning. I was eating a bowl of cereal, and my mother-in-law texted me and said, "You had a million subscribers. Congratulations!" So I got the news from my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was eating a bowl of grape nuts. <laughs> Yum, delicious. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, I hit a million, um, and I, honestly, 15 years ago, I never would have even imagined that being a thing. So it's kind of surreal. That happened, so thank you. I mean, you all watching is the reason someone can even hit a million subscribers, so appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah? What is the most expensive thing you've done for a video? The most expensive thing I have done? Whether it's you commissioned it or bought it or both. I licensed footage from the BBC. It was $5,000. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> but it was very good footage, so. <laughs> That's the most expensive thing, I think. Yeah, but like, practically, like, fly wherever it was and film it yourself. <laughs> well, this was, so this was, if, if it's from the Mario 3 video. I got some, it was some program on the BBC in, like, 1990, and they went to Nintendo headquarters, and they filmed Miyamoto and his team working on, like, Mario 3 stuff. And so, that's, like, I mean, you're just not going to find that anywhere. Cool. So, yeah, so... I was like, you know, they had they had a, like a little preview version on Twitter. They tweeted one time, but the quality was just horrible. And so I said, I'm going to see how much it is to license this. And I, I bit the bullet and paid for it because I thought it was important. So, yeah. Video making can be very expensive. <laughs> you can make a lot of money with B-roll. <laughs> you could just sell B-roll. You could probably make a living off of it. Yeah. So, you convinced me to buy several games. Okay. Like, when, you were, when you were doing videos about them, I even bought one because you did a Star Fox video. Star Fox. Okay. I bought it today. You bought Star Fox today? Yeah. It's a great game. I, I bought a Star Fox 2 t shirt today. Didn't even know they made a Star Fox 2 t shirt. <laughs> Very excited. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, what is the gaming? Go to, game to chill out? This is weird. Um, I really like to play Apex Legends with my friends. It's not a chill out game though. It's very frustrating and very difficult and I yell into the microphone and all that stuff. But I like to play with my friends so like it's fun that way. Um, but if I'm not playing Apex Legends, I right now I am playing uh, Grapple Dog. You heard of Grapple Dog? Yeah. It's very fun. It's basically Bionic Commando, but you're a dog and you're on grappling. It's it's like an updated Bionic Commando. It's really good. It's on the Switch and Steam. Um, and then another chill out game. I love uh, Earthbound. I'll just play through Earthbound. It's very chill. Yeah. Any other questions? Right here. Um, just curious what your thoughts are on the new Atari show coming out. Atari show? The Tetris, the Tetris show, yeah. Oh, the Tetris movie. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm excited. It looks good. Um, obviously, there's some things in the trailer where I was like, mm, that didn't happen. But, uh, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, it's a movie, so of course they're going to... They're gonna fudge a few things. Like I think in the trailer, there's a seat. There's like a car chase scene, and then there's one scene where he's like getting beat up in an alley. And I'm like, okay, 
<laughs> yeah, was, it wasn't that that intense, but I'm excited. Like I think there's so many interesting stories in video game history that would make fantastic movies, and this was just one. This is just one of many stories that would make a great movie. So I'm excited for it. Very excited. We'll see how it is, though. Yeah. Is there any topic you'd like to cover, but for one reason or another, you just are not able to do a video on it, probably ever? Ever? Ever. Whether it's due to licensing or budget or just... Oh. Something. Well, hmm. Um, well, you know... Okay, so here's an example. I, I made a Blu-ray a couple years ago. And on that Blu-ray, we did a video on the hot coffee mod in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> um, and we specifically chose that topic because YouTube just won't allow that to be covered. Um, so we thought, well, we'll, we'll do it on the Blu-ray. Uh, so that's a great example of a topic that I just can't make for YouTube because it just it shows, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> but there's like the, the adult Atari games. I would love to do a video on the adult Atari games because it's it's wacky, you know, it's a wacky story. But again, maybe YouTube's a little more lenient on Atari adult games, but stuff like that, yeah. Gratuitous violence, adult content, you know, those are interesting stories. But yeah, you have to work with the YouTube system as well, which is frustrating. But you know. See, people know an audience. They've got YouTube experience. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all so much for coming to my panel, and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Have a good weekend.